lean on us. We are here for you. You matter. You are not alone. Are you feeling overwhelmed? Not sure where to turn? The National Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is there for you 24 7. Call or text 988 or chat at 988sc.org. Whether you're having an emergency or you know someone who needs support now, they can help you take the next step towards finding hope and healing. There is hope. 988sc.org. Introducing Carvana Value Tracker, where you can track your car's value over time and learn what's driving it. It might make you excited. Whoa, didn't know my car was valued this high. It might make you nervous. Uh Uh-oh, market's flooded. My car's value just dipped 2.3%. It might make you optimistic. Our low mileage is paying off. Our value's up. And it might make you realistic. Mm, Car prices haven't gone up in a couple weeks. Maybe it's time to sell. But it will definitely make you an expert on your car's value. Carvana Value Tracker. Visit Carvana.com to start tracking your car's value today. Hmm? Ah! Hmm. Is he... Will he rise again? Who? The boy. No. He's just dead. Can you be sure? To make you a vampire, they have to suck your blood. And then you have to suck their blood. It's like a whole big sucking thing. Mostly, they're just gonna kill you. Why am I still talking to you? You really have no idea what's going on, do you? You think it's coincidence you're being here? That boy was just the beginning. Oh, why can't you people just leave me alone? Because you are the slayer. And to each generation, a slayer is born. One girl in all the world, a chosen one, one born with With a strength strength and skill to hunt the the vampires, to stop the spread of their evil blah, blah, blah. I've heard it, okay? I really don't understand this attitude. You've you've accepted your duty. You've, You've slain vampires before. Yeah, and I've both been there and done that, and I'm moving on. What do you know about this town? It's two hours in the freeway from Neiman Marcus. Dig a bit in the history of this place and you'll find a, uh, a steady stream of fairly odd occurrences. Now, I believe this whole area is a center of mystical energy. The things gravitate towards it that, that, that you might not find elsewhere. Like vampires. Like zombies. Werewolves. Incubi. Succubi. Everything you've ever dreaded was under your bed but told yourself couldn't be by the light of day. They're all real. What? You like sent away for the Time Life series? Uh, yes. Did you get the free phone? Um, the calendar. Go. Cool. Okay, first of all, I'm a vampire slayer. And secondly, I'm retired. Hey, I know. Why don't you kill him? I'm a watcher. I, I haven't the skill. Oh, come on. Stake through the heart, a little sunlight. It's like falling off a log. A, a slayer slays. A, a watcher. Watches? Yes. No. He, he trains her. He, 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 he prepares her. Prepares me for what? For getting kicked out of school? For losing all of my friends? For having to spend all of my time fighting for my life and never getting to tell anyone because I might endanger them? Go ahead. Prepare me. everybody welcome to the podcast i'm penny and i'm kara and this is still slaying a buffy verse podcast dedicated to all things buffy this episode we're going to discuss one why we're doing this and two giving you all a sense of what to expect We are embarking on a rewatch of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the 1997 show created by Joss Whedon and starring Sarah Michelle Gellar in the title role. So, uh, Kara, you were um, a kid when the show first came out. What are your sort of early Buffy memories? Gosh, I was always, so I was in, I think... It was second semester of third grade when the first season aired and then first semester of fourth grade when the second aired, which sounds absolutely ridiculous now. But I was always trying to watch things that I probably shouldn't have. And I I was a, oh yeah, but I was a very, I don't know, I was a very kind of nerdy mature kid and I was devouring, you know, any books I could get my hands on. 
And whenever I saw Buffy, like, scrolling through the channels, there was something about it. And so I would watch bits and pieces before I, you know, one of my parents came in and told me to stop. And eventually, season five, when Michelle Trachtenberg came on as Dawn, my mom let me watch it because she figured it was kind of taking a turn for younger audiences. Yeah, okay. And (laughs) I let her have that impression as I got to watch it. And then in, oh gosh, my senior year of college... I got Netflix for the first time, and it was when you could still, you know, get the DVDs in the mail. Yep. So that was the very first thing I did with my Netflix membership was binge Buffy from start to finish twice in a row. Fantastic. (laughs) And now, you know, in law school, it was a good comfort watch, and I've watched it every now and then just to go back and be a little nostalgic and it's one of my favorite shows me too i um i'm a little bit older than you so when uh buffy first came out it was right before i started law school and the first you know few seasons were on when i was in law school so i didn't have time back then to watch much tv so i didn't Mm -hmm. sort of catch on to buffy being interesting and fun until like halfway through the second season And uh, I think I was like home for Thanksgiving or something. And somebody, one of my sisters or somebody was was like, oh, this Buffy show is on. Let's watch that. And I was like, I had seen the movie and I loved the movie. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to check out the show. And of course, as soon as I watched it, I was like, oh, this is this is better than the movie. Like, like, I did not know (laughs) it was going to be this good. (laughs) <laughs> um, and then I was hooked. And then it was like a, a process of back then it was like VCRs, right? So like trying to record Buffy on oh, yes. when I wasn't home and setting up a VCR. and But like making sure my roommate didn't like change the channel before Gosh. I got home. And then like sometimes I'd miss an episode. And then, oh, God, it was such a relief when the DVDs came out. And I could just like mm-hmm. own whole seasons and watch them whenever I wanted. And... Uh, It was really good. It is crazy to think of how spoiled, you know, kids and teenagers are today that have never dealt with VHS or having to, you know, run back in the room once a commercial break is over to make sure you didn't miss anything. Yeah, exactly. The like hurdles that we would jump running from the kitchen back to the to the living room. Like, you know, one kid, one sibling would yell, it's on. And then. The other sibling would, like, do some kind of dangerous race across the house. Um, And if you're me, with my little brother, I was frequently yelling it's on before it actually was just to see how fast I could get to come back in the room. (laughs) But it's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And then I spread Buffy love to, like, you know, my siblings and some of my friends. And then um, when I started working at my first uh, law firm job... I bonded with a couple of other lawyers over Buffy and it, it became like a weekly coffee date to That's to get awesome. together on Wednesdays and talk about the previous night's episode. So it was like an early way for me to not go completely insane working mm-hmm. at a law firm, which was not a happy time otherwise. But it's good. You gotta find the good ones in there. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> um so yeah, Buffy. And then, you know, so We're going to talk about, we might as well just talk about it right now. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, a a few years ago, Charisma Carpenter came out and and said some things that happened to her when she was on Buffy and on Angel and that Joss Whedon, you know, just treated people badly and was a giant (sighs) jerk. And for a while, I, it ruined my enjoyment of the show and I didn't rewatch it for a while. And then... I started thinking about all the other people who made the show and worked on the show and all these actors who poured their heart and soul into it, the other writers, the producers, the directors. And I was like, I'm not going to let this like jerk ruin something that is important to me. Buffy was the first real female superhero character. Um, You know, like before that we'd had like the Linda Carter, Wonder Woman like police woman, there weren't a lot of of leading ladies at all. And then to have one who was powerful and feminine yes. and vulnerable and funny mm-hmm. and 
you know, had friends and had flaws. I she was so real and so whole. And mm-hmm. then the show was so quippy and funny and sharp. I just it was important to me and it still is and I'm just not willing to let stupid Joss Whedon, you know, ruin it for me. So what we're going to do is just like he's the one of the major creators of the show. He gets a lot of credit. He's a writer of lots of episodes. He directed a bunch of episodes. But we're just not going to talk about him. Like I like it. Just don't let's not give him any airtime. So after this, I, eh. I will say I had a similar, you know, reaction when all of that news came out. And I just remember being so angry that this person who had created, you know, this figure and kind of almost role model model since I was so young watching Buffy. I was like, you cannot ruin this for me. Like, this is not fair. And thinking about, you know, once listening to what Sarah Michelle Gellar had to say, Charisma Carpenter and a bunch of the other women, especially that had been associated with him and saying that, you know, he is not Buffy. He is not forever tied to us. So it's like, okay, I'll go with that. We can just appreciate what everybody else has done. And, you know, I just, I didn't want that taken away from me. It was too important. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I I think that there was talk for a while of a Buffy reboot. And I think that the news about him Mm kind of killed that. I'm hoping that at some point there will be a Buffy reboot. My personal hope is that they don't completely reboot, but that they just do like a Buffy the next generation kind of thing like they just you know they they pick another mm-hmm. slayer mm-hmm. in the future to follow and that's our hero but um I'd be good with that I think he the only way it's going to happen is if he um hands the reins over maybe j- even just to his brother I've never heard any bad things about his brother that's um, true and he was the showrunner for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. which I loved I thought it was a great show mm-hmm. um so more Buffy in any form I would be happy yeah really just anything in that universe yeah more slayers more watchers i would i would watch an entire show about faith in a heartbeat oh Um, yeah you know she's so fun um spike i would watch spike forever Mm -hmm. there's so many great characters that came out of buffy some of them some of the greatest characters of course have been slain but um there's a lot left and and it would be fun to watch any of them that would be great. Gosh, I love Spike. I don't think my parents were thrilled when they realized I love Spike. Oh, he's um, so great. <laughs> but he just, oh, I, there's something about him. And still, you know, as a 35 year old watching, I'm like, yep, I love Spike. Yeah. He's entertaining. He's, just, he's mm-hmm. smart. He's never he boring, right? He's never, never, and he doesn't brood. Like, Angel's so broody. Yes, he's too dramatic. And I can't. I get why he's broody and I get why Buffy loves him, but like mm-hmm. Spike is just so fun. Yep. And sharp and witty. He's just uh Yeah, he's delightful. That's a problem. He and Faith. When I was little, I was like, Oh, this should have told me something about myself. Yeah. How much? <laughs> like there we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were too young to understand what it meant, but it's yeah, true. those were the early signs of your true personality. <laughs> yep. At 35, now I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, this all right. I do sense. like the bo- those bad boys. <laughs> mm. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> yeah. So, um, so the show came out in 1997. And back then, a TV show was only successful if it was on, you know, a network. And it was broadcast... 20 or more episodes a season. So there's the first season of Buffy is 12 episodes because it was a mid-season replacement. And then after that, the seasons are 22 episodes long. There's a lot of filler in there. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try something that I I haven't listened to another podcast that's done it this way, but we're not going to rewatch every single episode. We're going to just focus on the ones that we are excited to talk about. So you guys don't have to listen to any episodes of the podcast where we're like, uh, I guess I <laughs> liked the outfits they were wearing. Like, we won't be yeah. forced to come up with something to talk about because we're going to focus on the ones we love. 
Um, we'll give you recaps of the ones in between and any important plot points. And obviously, like, if you're watching along with us, like, watch the ones in between. But For just sure. don't feel like you need to, like, watch them really closely or anything because uh, yeah, like, we're not going to talk don't about need those. To t- don't need to take notes with Inca Mummy Girl no. in depth. <laughs> no. Um, although that's a pretty fun episode. I um, do like that episode. And you can send us feedback about any episodes. Um, or if we're not covering one that is like your absolute most favorite episode, like let us know. Uh, nothing is written in stone. Things are always subject to change. I will say, like, I don't know anybody... Nobody in my life, like my real life, I'll say, is yeah. a huge Buffy fan. So I want to know what everybody thinks. Like, I cannot wait to talk to you and hear what other people think about Buffy because nobody lets me nerd out about this in real life. I know how so, that feels when you're like a, a lonely nerd all alone about something. Yes. Yeah. You, need, you need a community to talk to about it. That's how Absolutely. I found Podcastica. I was trying so hard to get my friends to start, like, just an email chain about Handmaid's Tale. And, like, oh, yeah. I couldn't get it going. Even the ones oh I knew gosh. were watching the show. And then um, I had already um, heard Jason and Lucy talking about Walking Dead. Uh, mm-hmm. At that time, I was listening to, like, two or three different Walking Dead podcasts. But then... Um, when I realized that Jason was coming out with a Handmaid's Tale podcast, I was like, oh, that's really exciting. And that's when I started sending in feedback and getting, like, really involved Mm -hmm. with Podcastica. The rest is, you know. I remember your feedback for Handmaid's Tale. Like, you (laughs) always had really good feedback. Awesome. Thank you. (laughs) That was the first way. I was like, now I know Penny's name. And then you started popping up more and more. And that actually, part like, that was a big part of why I started sending in feedback. Because I listened, oh, gosh. To Jason and Karen, probably the, th- I think it was the third episode of their podcast that aired. Wow. And I just never wrote in. I was like, no, like, I'm just gonna listen to what everybody else has to say. And then maybe like, what, eight years later, <laughs> you started writing in. <laughs> I started writing in. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And now here we are. And here we which are. Which is great. <laughs> uh, we are very excited about this project. And, um, I am hoping that we're going to meet a lot more Buffy fans um, in the Podcastica Mm -hmm. listener family and maybe uh, get some people from outside the already existing Podcastica listening family. For Um, sure. Tell your friends, you know, and really we want it to be a conversation, so please send feedback in. The more people who participate, the more fun it is for everybody. Um, And if you have, like, really out there opinions, like, throw them out. That's, That's the best. When somebody writes oh, yeah. in with, like, a completely bonkers opinion I've never thought of before, it just makes me so happy. Or calls in. Voicemails, too. We love those. Always. Um, so uh, we're going to start. We're going to. This is going to be controversial. But we're going to skip all of season one. Season one is mostly just not that great. Oh. And... There's a few plot points you need to know, but you really don't need to watch season one. Like, her name is Buffy. She lives in Sunnydale with her mom. She's the vampire slayer, which means she has supernatural powers of being strong, fast, good at fighting, etc. She has a couple of nerdy friends, and um, the school librarian is also her watcher. Um, yeah. A watcher is like a member of like a uh, sort of like a brotherhood of stuffy, nerdy people in England <laughs> who study demons and vampires and, you know, the forces of darkness. And and um, they have these uh, some of them have this role of watcher where they're teamed up with a slayer and they sort of guide, mentor, train etc the slayer and uh, Buffy's watcher is named Rupert Giles um, if you are a first time Buffy watcher you may recognize him from Ted Lasso where he also mm-hmm. plays Rupert uh, Rupert Mannion or you might recognize him from pre-Buffy when he was in the incredibly successful Taster's Choice coffee ads no International Delights coffee ads was it Taster's right. Choice 
anyway, there was these coffee ads and they were a love story and they were a series. So you had to watch all the ads to get the whole story of this romance between Anthony Stewart head and um, I have no idea who the actress was who played the other person in the in the pair. And they were like big news back then. They were the first ads that were serialized and like people talked about them. They were like, oh, the, the coffee couple, what do you think's gonna happen? Cause it would be weeks between an, each new ad. It's fantastic. So fun. And then when he showed up on Buffy, I was like, hey, that guy's familiar to me. <laughs> I've seen him on coffee commercials. Oh, um, my gosh. Yeah, he's great. He's also done an episode of Doctor Who and some other things. He's much more known in, in Britain than he is in the U.S., but he will always be Giles mm-hmm. to, to those of us who love Buffy. Oh, yeah. I guess the another important thing would be to note that Sunnydale happens to be on top of a hell mouth. That's a really Just... good point. You know, like, yeah. which I guess I'm imagining that most people who are tuning in and tuning in, that dates. Yeah. <laughs> very much so. That are listening to us uh, have at least seen Buffy or might be familiar with it. But if you're not, the idea of the Hellmouth in Sunnydale is that it is, you know, essentially a sort of a portal between, you know, Earth as we know it and this other kind of, you know, hell dimension where you have all these demons and other creatures and it's just kind of perfect that Buffy happened to move to Sunnydale where this hell mouth is because things get a little extra supernatural and intense around the hell mouth. Yeah it has a mystical energy that acts like kind of a funnel and draws you know creepy crawlies toward it so sunnydale never lacks for demonic activity and uh buffy has plenty of things to slay not just vampires and um the going to high school on a hellmouth is just sort of the perfect metaphor for high school and how it feels you know you feel trapped you feel like you're both too mature and too immature to handle it Mm-hmm. boys that you date turn into monsters other students turn out to be monsters teachers turn out to be monsters like mm-hmm. there's a lot about high school that's demonic and uh we're gonna dive into all of those things oh, yeah. i love looking back on that now being far removed from it <laughs> like just you know for our listeners i just started re-watching the show and I think the last time was maybe four years ago and already I feel like I can appreciate it in a you know in a different way than even four years ago so I can't wait to get into all of the themes that pop up it's gonna be so great so the first episode we're gonna cover is season two episode three the title is school hard and uh, it's parent-teacher night at Sunnydale High School, and uh, Buffy's mom is going to meet Buffy's principal for the first time, and she's real nervous about her worlds colliding. Oh, um, and of course, you know, wacky hijinks ensue, as they always do. <laughs> uh, so that'll be the first episode we cover. That means, of course, we're skipping the first two episodes of season two, called When She Was Bad and Some Assembly Required. It doesn't necessarily mean that those episodes are bad. It just means they, they're not as interesting for us to talk about or as like sort of important to the overall arc of the show. Um, and then um, after School Hard, we're going to skip Inca Mummy Girl and Repto- Reptile Boy and cover season two, episode six, Halloween, which is another one of my Love all-time it. favorite episodes of the show. It's so good. See, after Halloween, we are going to be jumping a few episodes to Ted. And, you know, same thing. The episodes in between, I would encourage you not to skip if you are watching Buffy for the first time, of course, because they have incredibly important 
plot points. They just might not be our favorites for one reason or another. But we will pick up with season two, episode 11, Ted, which is one of my favorite episodes because we have a guest appearance from John Ritter. And, Absolutely classic. Uh, oh, it's, it's so good. It's wonderful. And he plays Buffy's mother's new boyfriend, Ted. And everyone seems to love Ted, except for Buffy, who is very suspicious of him. And, of course, we're on a hellmouth, so we understand why. And we get to see how that unfolds. Uh, it's pretty great. It really and is. then we really agreed very quickly that neither of us wanted to cover bad eggs. Yeah. Um, season two, episode twelve. I can't watch that episode. It gives me the creeps so bad. It is creepy. Um, like it's just. I'll mm. never watch that episode again. So if Don't you're watching it. for the first time, like you might not have a problem with it. Go ahead and watch it. I personally can't watch it. Yeah. So sorry, we're not covering that. <laughs> you never know. Um, and we're, we're we are going to cover the next three, which are all, I think, pretty important for season two, especially, and the overall Buffy-verse. So season two, episode episode 13 is Surprise, and this is another episode featuring Spike and Drusilla, and they are attempting to essentially gather and put together body parts of a demon called the Judge. And they think it'll be, you know, now this ultimate weapon, essentially, that they'll be able to use to finally def to defeat Buffy. Um, and there are also some very important Angel and Buffy moments in this episode. Yeah, that's a two-parter. Um, episode 13, Surprise, and episode 14, Innocence, are, are two parts of the same story. And uh, they're fantastic. They're some of the best episodes really of the are. show. They're really they're really important. Oof. I feel like I'll never forget watching those for the first time. Probably yeah. younger than I should have been. But <laughs> <laughs> even then, it's it had an impact. <laughs> um, and then episode 15, which is Phases, is another very important one for the Buffyverse because we are introduced to werewolves and a very important werewolf ends up coming up in this episode so we get to see buffy and the gang you know i'm i do say scooby gang for people that are not familiar with buffy there are some slang sometimes referring to buffy and xander and willow as the scooby gang and if you hear me say that that's why but we get to see them kind of deal with this new threat and learn more about it um <clears throat> we're gonna cover the next two as well there's uh episode 16 is bewitched bothered and bewildered it's a little bit of a rom-com magic fantasy episode and then um i don't want to give away too much here but episode 17 passion is um exactly that it's extremely mm -hmm. passionate and uh, it's a big turning point in the season. Yeah, that's a big one. Um, we are then skipping over episode 18, Killed by Death. Uh, that one is not incredibly important plot-wise, but I think it's still one worth watching if you're going through for the first time. And we will be picking back up with the two-part season two finale. So that's episode 21, Becoming Part 1, and then episode 22, Becoming Part 2, which is the second half of that finale. And this, I think, is one of the most important finales of the series. I know for some people it's not their favorite, but... This is when the Buffy Angel storyline really comes to a head. And it's it's very, very intense finale. Yeah, I think it's determinative. I don't think I said that word correctly, but um, it determines a lot of Buffy's future decisions, what happens in the mm -hmm. season two finale. She, she grows and learns a lot from what happens, and it's, uh, it's I guess it's a coming-of-age moment for her. Very true. Um, Very much so. It's pretty great. So obviously, Kara and I both have watched the series before, <laughs> so we know what happens ahead of the episode that we're in. We're going to try really, really hard 
to not have spoilers in our main discussion of the episode, but we're going to save them for the end of the podcast so that um, if you are a first time watcher and you don't want spoilers, you can just not listen to that part. We'll try to shove it all into one section at the end, which we are going to call the Watcher's Diaries. Um, And then uh, we don't have any feedback for this episode because it's just our introduction, but when we do... (laughs) You guys will be listening to that feedback at the bronze, and uh, a good time will be had by all. Man, like 13-year-old me wanted to be able to go to the bronze so bad. I know. So bad. (laughs) Um, They had some pretty amazing musical acts come through the bronze. Right? Like Amy Mann played the bronze, Nico Case played the bronze, like... That was something else rewatching after, you know, when I was little rewatching in college, I was just like, holy shit, like, yeah, these are some good bands. How did I miss this? Well, you were too little to know who they were, but it's true. Um, and a lot of them were <laughs> pre fame. There was like people mm-hmm. who were on like right before they hit or more indie artists, but some of the music from Buffy is still on playlists I listen to all the time. Definitely. Um, great music. So that's it. That's our show for this introductory episode. Uh, Thank you guys for listening. And I hope you're going to join us for this adventure as we head into season two. Absolutely. And if you would like to get in touch with us or find out more about Podcastica, you can find all of our contact information at podcastica.com. And you can write in right from the podcastica.com website. You can record a voice message there, or you can, uh, this is the easiest thing ever, record a voice note on your phone and just email it to us at talk at podcastica.com and, uh, or just send us an email or we'll be posting um, feedback, comment posts on our Facebook page. There's a Podcastica group and a Podcastica page where we'll post those. There's also a page that's called the Z Heads page, and um, mm-hmm. that is for members of the Patreon group. If you want to join the Patreon, there's information about that on podcastica.com to, as well. I got to tell you, the Patreon group is a lot of fun. Uh, mm-hmm. There's you know special content, and we have this group that we're a member that we're members of, and everybody like chats with each other a lot, and we have email threads about all of the different. TV shows that we all love and um, people, you know, post jokes and memes and uh, it's just a silly, fun group of people. Yeah. It's a nice, positive little corner of the internet. It makes me happy yeah. to have something like that. Yeah, the big so rules would... in the Zed Head group are no spoilers and don't be a jerk. Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody pretty much follows those rules and uh, it works out really nicely. It's kind of nice. I will say, if you have not uh, listened to Podcastica shows and you have stumbled upon us and we are somehow the first Podcastica show that you guys have found, definitely give some of these other shows a chance. We cover so many different shows. Anything from, you know, I know there's a group covering Ashoka right now, uh, all the Star Wars shows from White Lotus, Yellow Jackets, um, Stranger Things, when that comes back, eventually yeah. will be amazing. But uh, there's check also it out. Wheel of Time is about to come out. Yes. And um, there's going to be the second season of White Lotus they're about to start. And um, uh, well, if you want to go back in time a little bit, Kara was on a podcast about the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, and yeah, are you currently so doing Only Murders in the Building? Yes, we are. It's perfectly marvelous. Only murders in the building, and that one has been very fun to cover. That's great. It's not technically a podcast, a podcast, but it's Kara, so no. we support it. Yeah, um, it's like uh, yeah. I love Only Murders in the like Building. It. it is such a great yes. show, and I just want to reach it's through awesome. the TV and like steal all of Selena Gomez's coats. I know she has the most they- amazing coats. It's so good. I love her so much. Her and that Mabel in that show is cooler than I will ever be. And I love her so much. Yeah, she's great. Um, and there's so many other shows on Podcastica. It, like, we can't possibly sum them all up. But take a spin through the website. You'll see there's so many things that we've covered in the past. Like, if you're ever bored, there's, like, 
probably thousands oh, yeah. of hours of podcast listening if you wanted to. And we keep adding shows in the future. If there's something that you think you would like us to cover, like write in. We take mm-hmm. suggestions from listeners all the time. I um, cover a show called Extraordinary, uh, which was on Hulu and in Europe it's on Disney Plus. And that was a suggestion from a listener who said like, hey, this show looks like it's gonna be interesting. And Greg and I just were like, okay, yeah, sure. And it turned out to be absolutely hilarious. Like one of the funniest shows I've ever seen. So um, definitely write in and let us know. If there's something great out there that we haven't found yet, we would we would love to hear about it from you, the listeners. For sure. Let's see. Oh. <clears throat> and oh, I was like, where are we? <laughs> once you've like checked out all of our podcasts, like we keep telling you to do, if you like what we do, hit like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, review, tell your friends. If you think we're horrible, then tell all your enemies and, you know, that's something you can do for them. Um, just whatever it is that helps listeners find us, because the more the merrier. Next time on this show, Still Slang, we'll be covering season two, episode three, School Hard, which is a great episode. I cannot wait to talk to you about that episode. I know. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on ChumbaCasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino-style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere, even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's ChumbaCasino.com and live the Chumba life. No purchase necessary. VGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free and Anytime, anywhere, and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. DTW, avoid, we're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions 18 plus.